In a number of my videos, I've said that I use signal generators to test things like CRT monitors. And I've shown um, the testing a few times, but I haven't really explained exactly how I set up the signal generators. I've been asked if I could just explain briefly how I set these up to actually do the testing. Now, it's of course different for every type of CRT uh, monitor, but uh, I'll give a very brief outline as to how it's set up for this particular monitor and then hopefully that will help anyone that wants to test these in the same way. It's quite a useful way of testing them and testing the CRT monitor before you hook it up to the piece of equipment you're trying to repair can really save you a lot of time um, because it eliminates any issues with the uh, problem being the CRT monitor itself. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how to connect the signal generators. You're going to need at least three channels and the three channels are for the uh, vertical sync pulses, the horizontal sync pulses and then some sort of video drive. So they're the three basic signals that you need to feed into a CRT in order to make it do something. So how you go about figuring out how to make those connections will depend on what information you have available. If you have a schematic um, that's of course the easiest way. If you don't have a schematic then look up the uh, model number for the CRT controller board, not necessarily the CRT itself. And most boards have fairly uh, standard pinouts. Uh, so you have uh, units like the uh, TV9, the TV90s, that sort of thing. And you'll find something like this. They're fairly common. There are variants of this, of course, and um, you'll need to figure out which pin is which. Now if it's a composite video signal that the monitor's uh, expecting, you can still use this exact same technique. The only difference is you'd have to combine the three signals you're getting from your uh, signal generators using something like a resistive mixer or something like that, which is really just um, three resistors all feeding into the common video signal in such a way that um, the three uh, signals from your signal generators get mixed together and uh, create the composite video signal. That's obviously why it's called composite, it's just a, a composition of the three signals that are required to drive the CRT. So once you've got the board layout, um, ideally you're going to need the schematic as well. Uh, again they're fairly standardised and what you're looking for are firstly all the grounds so identify any grounds that you can find uh, and then you'll need to uh, look for the uh, V sync pulses. Um, quite often you'll have separate grounds for video and the sync pulses and contrast and brightness controls. But find all the grounds and obviously connect all those together. Uh, and then you'll need to find the power supply pin and once you've found the power supply pin uh, then you'll need to determine what supply it's actually looking for and you need to be fairly careful with that you don't want to blow the thing up um, before you even started testing it. So once you've figured out all the connections the only one that's possibly going to cause confusion are uh, inputs such as brightness and contrast. Now in general with boards like this they'll have onboard presets um, for things like contrast and brightness. If they don't, then you'll need to attach something externally, otherwise there'll be no uh, video drive internally in the board and the uh, screen will stay blank even if everything else is correct. Uh, we'll come to how to determine if the board's actually running um, in the absence of video um, output on the screen in a minute. Uh, something like this where you have an external pot shown as going to ground you can just feed the signal directly in but I suggest that you use a dropper resistor just to make sure that you're not going to uh, cause excessive uh, base current or drive in any of the internal components on the board. Uh, that's what I always do, I use a 150 ohm resistor in series with the um, video input line. Um, it might not be necessary but if you use that um, then at least you're not going to do any harm if it is necessary. Uh, so once you've got all the uh, pins identified, as I say looking for the grounds, um, vertical drive, horizontal drive and video input and uh, any contrast and uh, brightness. Once you've got them all identified what I tend to do is just to make a note uh, on the uh, documentation as to 
which connector is which. Sometimes you'll need to get an edge connector to connect directly to the board. In cases like this, there's a, a wiring loom comes from the uh, back of the CRT. You can't actually get to it once it's actually installed. And uh, you can then connect to uh, that uh, wiring loom rather than the edge connector directly. It depends on the physical layout, of course. Uh, but I make notes as to which pins which and then I connect my um, signal generators accordingly. So be very careful with the power, make sure that you have the correct power pins identified first uh, and then uh, get your you know, video drives and uh, sync pulse drives sorted out. The next question is what levels to set. Um, in general if it's a composite signal you're looking for a combined signal of uh, one volt peak to peak. With boards like this, again if you have the schematic you can simply look at the schematic to see what it's expecting and this is uh, of course not that fussy, it's going to be anything over one volt looking at the schematic um, but because there's uh, resistive droppers uh, then and a capacitor then uh, chances are it will accept a very wide range of signals. But try to figure out what signal level it's looking for first. If you can't do that then start all the generators at one volt peak to peak and um, that way you'll be fairly certain you're not going to do any damage to anything. If there are uh, external brightness and contrast controls that you've fitted, turn them right up. You can always turn them down later. The next thing is to program the required supply parameters. In this case it needs a 15 volt supply and according to the specification it draws about 12 watts so I've set 1 amp as a current limit. What I normally do before I then go ahead and connect the signal generators is I will connect just the power and then power up the CRT board. And I'll do that while observing the neck of the CRT itself and I'm looking to see if the heater is coming on. Uh, normally the heater will come on as soon as you apply power to the board but some will only power up the heater when they're receiving uh, sync pulses so just be aware of that. So what you can do is turn on the uh, power. So I've got both signal generators, the apples are turned off, so there's nothing, there's no sync pulses, no video going to the um, CRT board. If I turn the power on, then 15 volts, and it's drawing about 400 milliamps, which is way lower than we'd expect it to draw uh, when it's running. So uh, that's a good sign. It means that we're probably hooked up to the right pins. If it was completely the wrong pins, we'd probably only draw one or two milliamps, and um, we can be fairly certain because it's drawing so much power that uh, we're at least on the power pins. Next thing to determine is uh, what values or frequencies to use for the signal generators. Now, I've looked at the schematic in this case, and there are 324 scan lines and it's a 50 hertz monitor so that gives me a 16.2 kilohertz. So what I've done is I've used channel 1 on the lower of these two signal generators to drive the horizontal sync pulses. The horizontal sync pulses will be the high frequency one and I've set that to 16.2 kilohertz uh, because that's what the uh, electronics seems to want in terms of its um, number of lines and the uh, frame refresh. It's a 50 hertz monitor, so I've set the vertical um, frequency to 50 hertz, so that's the frame rate. Um, so that's the bottom um, signal generator sorted out. The horizontal is 16.2 kilohertz, and the um, vertical is uh, 50 hertz. So that's our two sets of sync pulses. Uh, then we want to be able to feed some video into it, and with a signal generator like this there are various uh, arbitrary waveforms that are built into it uh, but you can define your own and I've defined a couple that I use for CRT testing really what you're looking for is some uh, vertical uh, lines or well, you can do horizontal lines it depends on what you're trying to test uh, but in general vertical lines are going to be very indicative of the uh, response frequency of the uh, CRT monitor and the drive electronics which is what you're really trying to test. So 
The next thing is, well, what do you set for the video input? Well, if we set a frequency of 16.2 kilohertz, then what we'll end up with is uh, one set of vertical lines for each complete um, frame because we've got the same frequency on here as we have on this one. Now, if you wanted to lock them together, what you'd do is you'd feed both of your signal generators from uh, an external frequency reference, and that way they'd be synchronized. Because I'm not doing that here, uh, I'm not that interested in synchronizing it, I don't need to for the testing I'm doing, uh, they will be running at slightly different frequencies, which is why you'll see the uh, patterns move across the screen. Uh, and then we need to set a, a suitable amplitude for the um, the video input. So a few minutes ago I said that we can tell if we're actually uh, causing the electronics to drive the scan of the CRT even if there's nothing on the screen. And the way that you can go about doing that is to look at the current being drawn from the power supply. So at the moment it's drawing around 350 milliamps but if I now turn on the um, vertical and horizontal sync pulses, I'll leave the video off for now, then we should see that current rise quite significantly because it means that the um, deflection circuits will have been triggered in the CRT and it will it'll be trying to sweep the electron beam across the screen even if nothing's showing. So I'll turn the two sync pulses on and sure enough the current has now gone up from 350 to around 750. Um, so that increase in current tells me that the um, system within the CRT is now sweeping even if there's nothing showing on the screen. So if nothing's showing on the screen now then chances are it's because we're not giving it any video drive. So that's what I'll do next. I'll turn on um, this signal generator. I know that uh, it's uh, currently set to 2 volts peak to peak which is probably too low for the video input on this uh, machine. Looking at the schematic it appears like it's driven directly from TTL so chances are it's looking for um, 5 volt uh, signal levels going into the video. So what I'll do is increase the amplitude and we should see something start to appear on the screen and we do indeed start to see something appearing. I'll turn up to 4.5 volts and that's giving us a fairly good video drive. Notice that the image we're getting is kind of um, very uh, hazy, it looks like it's out of focus. It's not actually out of focus, it's just because we're feeding a sine wave into the uh, video circuit. Uh, also the flickering that you're seeing on the camera in the sort of vertical sense is not present on the uh, monitor when you look at it directly. That's just an artifact of the uh, video camera that I'm using. So what we'll do now is we'll change the um, waveform we're feeding into the uh, video input of the monitor. So we'll go from a sine wave and this is now a square wave so we're now seeing what we would expect to see and that we're getting a block of uh, white going across the screen. A couple of things that can be confusing here is you'll see that we're getting something sweeping rapidly back the other way. Uh, what that is, I'll just slow it down a bit um, so I can explain in more detail why we're seeing that kind of ghost going backwards. Um, so to synchronize the signal a bit better we just need to tweak the frequencies so the frequency of the top generator matches the frequency of the bottom one. So that's as close as we're going to get, that's the resolution of adjustment of the uh, two generators. So the reason that um, we're seeing this ghost going back the other way is the same reason we're seeing these bright um, diagonal lines. Each time the uh, electron beam gets to the right hand side of the screen it then rapidly shoots back the other way. Now normally that retrace is blanked by the electronics um, but because we're not doing that then that retrace line is seen on the display and it happens on not only every frame um, when it, the electron beam has to sweep back from the bottom right hand corner to the top left hand corner but it also happens after every line and because during that retrace there is video input in terms of this square wave we're feeding in then there's this ghost that we see going back across the screen it's wider than the white bar we're expecting to see because the electron beam is sweeping back much faster than it sweeps from left to right so from right to left it's going very fast 
and from left to right it's going slower. Uh, that's also why the one that's going from right to left is dimmer, is because it's going much faster. Uh, so you can ignore that, that's just an artifact of the way that the uh, retrace works on a CRT like this. The bit you're interested in are the bright bands. So we'll try a different waveform again. And I'll go to something that's a bit more useful. So if we go to just a short pulse, um, we can modify all this to produce pretty much any pattern that we want. Um, but as I say, what we're looking for is uh, a pattern that will allow us to properly uh, examine the performance of the system. If you want to produce horizontal lines, then you simply use a lower frequency. So if I, for example, put a one kilohertz signal into this we'll see we're getting uh, rapid uh, horizontal lines and what we can do is adjust the frequency to change the number of lines and the rate that they're moving across the screen. So again we're seeing the retrace lines here but you can ignore those. So if you want to uh, change the number of lines appearing on the uh, display you can do that just change the frequency and you'll see that we can go either higher or we can go lower and get wider bands. Uh, you'll need to each time adjust it to try and lock the frequencies together. But it allows you to set pretty much anything on the screen that you want to. So if you want to have even wider bands, just reduce the frequency still further. And now the spacing of the bands is due to frequency and the width of the bands is due to the pulse width of the pulse we're feeding into the uh, CRT. So you can adjust the frequencies to whatever you want. If we go back to 16.2 kilohertz, then we'll go back to the uh, bar that we had. If we double that, we'll get two bars because we're um, giving two pulses per line. So if I go up to 32.4 kilohertz, Notice we're now getting two bars. I'll try and slow it down a bit. Again, I'm just going to tweak the frequency a little bit to try and make these two synchronize. If you did use an external um, clock reference or signal reference for your two generators, then these would be synchronized. They wouldn't keep moving across the screen. Uh, so you can see that you can change the frequency, you can change the um, waveform that you're using, and that will give you different patterns but really what you're looking for is just a simple way to test the monitor. It allows you to test that the, uh, the height's correct, the width is correct, and that the um, system is fundamentally working. And it separates it from the complication of trying to get the main electronics to run while you're trying to maybe fix a fault with the CRT. You just need to determine the voltage levels to feed in. And as I say, if you start with one volt on each, uh, if the um, sync circuits don't start up and try increasing it, don't go too high if you're up to two or three volts and it's still not working then you might have a faulty board, don't just keep increasing it indefinitely, you'll probably damage something. And uh, with the video, um, again use a resistor in series with the video input just in case and then just increase up to uh, three or four volts and then you should see something appear on the screen. Um, but that's pretty much it. So if it's a different uh, layout, you do exactly the same thing. Just um, figure out which connections are for those three inputs. But they're your three basic inputs. Vertical sync, horizontal and video. Uh, remember that the horizontal is the high frequency one. Vertical is the frame rate, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, whatever it is. And then the video input is um, an arbitrary signal of your choice, depending on what you want to display on the screen. Okay, well hopefully that will be of uh, help to some people. If you want me to go into this in more detail or to demonstrate a composite uh, mixer, then let me know.